I can choose my thoughts. It is a decision. What I'm going to think about is a decision. It's my decision. I'm the one making the decision. There isn't anyone outside of me. There's no one holding my hand, telling me where to put the X. I'm doing all of that. It's a choice. And that's why we have the um, structure, I guess is the right word, structure of understanding the six thinking choices. So I can choose my thoughts in any moment. I can choose one of those six thinking choices. I'm the one making the choice. No one else is. Um, I, and if I'm the one making the choice, then I'm going to make a choice that's good for me. Which choice is good for me? Which one is good for me? Is Wendy here? No, Wendy, is Wendy over there? No, hi, Moni. Um, okay, so Wendy was talking about procrastination yesterday. And it's, it's so easy to understand when you understand that you're the one making the choice. You're the one who is choosing not to do what you think you should be doing. And then you're the one beating up on yourself. Right? And both of those choices in the, in the paradigm of the six thinking choices, both of those choices are negative. I won't do this thing that I know I need to do. Does that feel good? No. So that's what procrastination is all about is letting momentum carry you away, past momentum. You know how Abraham talks about the car going down the slopey hill, right? And then when Abraham says, once momentum has it, then you can't stop that car. But really, when we start changing the way we think our thoughts, that's exactly what we're doing, right? We are stopping that car because we do have to bring that momentum to a stop. And the way to do that, which Abraham also talks about, is to do it in small steps, not all at once. We cannot stop momentum all at once, but we can do it in small steps, right? We can, we can shift it in small steps. You don't apply the brake. So how many people here drive? Do you drive? All right. Nancy, you don't drive? Okay. Kareem, do you drive? Yes. Okay, so when, when, you're, when you're going towards a red light, do you apply the brake right at once when you get there? No. You start long before and you apply it slowly. Reminds me of my father. He used to reply, apply it right there. And we used to hold on with both hands to the seats because there were no seat belts. <laughs> right? And, uh, and my mother used to hate it. She just absolutely did not like it. But he never changed. <laughs> he never changed. And that's okay. Um, but the thing is, we want to apply the brakes slowly. So that's why... We do all the thinking work. Okay, Moni, that's okay. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> she has to leave early. That's okay. So, mm, give me a minute. Oh, so good. Okay. Honey bomb. Honey bomb tea. <laughs> okay. Um... So that's how we choose our thoughts. We can't go from one thought drastically to another thought. That's like applying the brakes like that. And, and you can't do that because that hurts, right? So, so that's why we do it one tiny little step at a time. But we can choose our thoughts because the important thing is to choose the direction of thought. Okay, we don't need to choose a drastically different thought. We just need to choose the direction. 
So instead of taking the car all the way downwards, we start. Here's my board. This is a board moment. <laughs> okay. So here we are. That's the hill. And the car is traveling, starting to travel at really high speed going down the hill. All we do is, and I'll use a different pen. All we need to do is to change that direction. Instead of going there, you take it here. So you know how you take a longer way so that you are slowly bringing it to a stop. If it goes direct down, it's going to go very quickly. But now if you go this way and this way and then this way, that's a much longer way down. It helps you to control where you're going instead of going here in the ditch. And you can bring it to a stop so that this event, this negative event that was waiting to happen over here does not happen. And where you actually end up is a softer, softer landing place. Make sense? So that's why we change our thoughts slowly. So what's important is the direction of thought. All I need to change is I don't need to bring the car back here because I can't. That's like applying the brakes right away. What I need to do is just change the direction of my thought just enough so that now I'm not hit. Now I'm not heading towards that negative event. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's, that's what we want to achieve. That's why we do it slowly. That's why we change our thoughts one little thought at a time, not all at once. And that's why doing this work can take time. When, when I tell you that I started so many years ago, right? Uh, I mean, I, I think I started well into my childhood, but, but it sped up. The pace of things changed when I discovered Abraham, but it wasn't like that was when I started my work. I didn't start learning what to do when I met Abraham. Meeting Abraham just added more mo positive momentum because when you're halfway up the emotional scale and then you apply momentum, you go up faster and you manifest faster, right? Because now you're in a positive place. So, but the thing is, sometimes it can take years, depending on how much negative momentum you have going on. So in this diagram, if this speed of going downhill was very fast, and, and instead of catching yourself over here, you caught yourself over here at this level, a lot of bad stuff has already happened because manifestations are taking place all along the way. You don't get here and then the manifestation happens. Manifestations are happening all, happening all along the way. And if you're already down here, then you change your direction a little bit. Well, you have to keep going, right? For a much longer time because there's more momentum that you need to stop, right? So that's why time, how much time it takes is a function of how long we've been doing it. And we have to be patient with ourselves. This is the one thing that happens a lot with people who discover law of attraction for the very first time. And they think everything's going to change overnight. Little things change, but big things take time to change. Because big things, those things that we think are big, have been going on for a very long time. That's why, right? So we have a choice. And this is what I teach when, when we look at the red car, blue car analogy that I use, we have a choice. And the choice is once I change my direction, I can apply a lot, I can apply myself a lot more. 
to doing the work because my commitment to feeling better is so big that I once I change my direction, I go here, I start putting a lot more effort into this so that I start this journey, I start the momentum of this journey at a much faster pace. Okay? And one of the things that helps in, in this process is when I, so there are negative beliefs. The reason that we are going in this negative direction is because there are negative beliefs that are taking us there. Well, if I change my direction and then I do the work so that I drop a negative belief and I drop another negative belief and I drop a negative belief, suddenly I'm so much lighter you know, you know what happens when you're lighter, you travel faster, right? Because the heavier the truck is, the bigger the in engine it needs, right? So, so the thing is, it's a combination of going faster and dropping negative beliefs, going faster and dropping negative beliefs. So those people who achieve almost overnight success with law of attraction those are people who change their direction understand what's going on suddenly change their direction become appreciators and start dropping beliefs okay but those people who change their direction so they've changed their direction over here but they're not dropping their beliefs these are not dropping, they will not progress as fast. They are heading in the right direction now, right? They're heading in the right direction, but they are not dropping the beliefs as fast. It's going to take longer. So those are the two elements. That's why Abraham says, take the path of least resistance. What does that mean? The path of least resistance is the path on which there are less beliefs getting in the way. That is the path. Because what is resistance? Resistance is a function of negative beliefs. Well, when you start dropping these negative beliefs, you have less resistance. That's the path of... So this path becomes the path of least resistance. Or, or you find another path that has less negative beliefs on it. So this is why Abraham says, get off the subject. The subject that you are going negative on, if you get off the subject, you deactivate all the beliefs right at once. All the beliefs are gone because you're not on that path. You just left the path. When I say shift your attention, see your intention is to get here, but your attention is here. Where does the car go? Where your eyes are looking? You don't look there and drive the car in the opposite direction, do you? No. You, the car goes where you're looking, where your attention is. So you want to go here, you're looking, but you're looking here. Your attention is here. So the car is going to end up here unless you do something to shift your attention. So what is the easiest thing to do? Don't look at any of this at all. Go to a different hill. Okay? Don't look at any of it. Don't put your attention there. It's so much easier to take your attention off the negative than to try and do this. But sometimes we just can't help ourselves. We just can't help ourselves because the thing that we want to figure out the thing that we want to switch around is so very important to us. So we keep going back there, trying to fix it. We keep going back there. And, and if that is the case, if we keep going back there, then the best thing we can do is shift our attention, change direction, and work on those beliefs so that we can let them go. Okay? And everything that we are doing here in the Mastermind Group, everything that we do, especially in the Heart and Mind Alignment Method course, is to give up those beliefs. That's, that's the work that we are doing in the Heart and Mind Alignment. That is the 
work we are doing with our daily affirmation. You know the benefit of the daily affirmation? Listening to it, reading what is written about it is that that talk that I do in the morning helps us to drop the beliefs, to shift them slowly so that we can go faster. And it is a process. It takes time. Even when you intellectually understand that a belief is bad for you, you still sometimes can't let go of it, right? I know I shouldn't be doing this. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway, right? I'll deal with the consequences later. Oh my God, people who get into credit card debt and trouble, that's what they do. I'll deal with this tomorrow. I'll deal with this tomorrow. I'll deal with this tomorrow. And then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. You can't deal with it tomorrow. If you deal with it tomorrow, it becomes bigger because while you were not dealing with it, it was gaining momentum. So now the momentum is bigger and harder to deal with, right? So that's why, remember the, the, the story I tell about going to Costco, the thought virus, right? You got to stop it right there. So for those who haven't heard that story, I'm going to go over it really quickly, short form story. I went to Costco because I had a big event. I was doing a, a, a three-day workshop meditation and and money and and that kind of stuff so i went to costco to buy food i had a big cart full of stuff and i love when costco does their tasting stations so there was this huge crowd at one end and i thought oh that's got to be something really good i really want a sample of that right so but there were so many people there i didn't want to bring my big cart you know, those carts, Costco carts are so big, I could sit in one of them. <laughs> so, so I parked it on the other side and I remember, I, I usually say I don't remember what it was, but I remember what it was. It was Gillette Blades on the other side. So I put it at Gillette Blades because no one was there. I just left my cart there and I went, got into the lineup to get my sample, got my sample and came back. And the woman at Gillette Blades is giving me this really stern look. She reminded me immediately of my th third grade teacher. My third grade teacher used to look at me that way. And I looked at her and I said, okay, I have not done anything inappropriate. I looked at her and I said, oh, this is, and I held up my sample. And I said, I only have one sample. <laughs> uh, I didn't say that to her, but. I held the sample up and I was thinking, I only have one sample. I didn't take two seriously. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? And, and, I, and as I went and I grabbed my cart, she says, do you know what you just did? And I'm like, uh, I only took one sample, promise. <laughs> and she says, you left your handbag in the cart. Someone could have swiped it. I did not want to get into an argument with her. I was not going to teach her law of attraction in two seconds. I just wanted to get away from her as fast as possible because I didn't just want to have that conversation with her. So I said to her, that does not happen in my world. And I saw her jaw drop. She was going to say something stern. And I walked away from her as fast as I could. And then I kept thinking about it. It didn't stop there. I kept thinking about it. I said, and why do I remember this? I remember this because I kept thinking about it. I said to her, uh, I said to myself, poor girl, you know, like I wish I could explain to her, but she looks like a very unhappy person. No wonder, <laughs> no wonder she's so unhappy because that's how she thinks her thoughts. And I thought to myself that, that those kinds of things only happen to people who think about them. And I know that she was saying this to me from a place of caring. She cared about what happened to me. And for a stranger who doesn't know me from scratch to care about what happens to me, that's really nice. So from not liking her, I went to, 
that's really nice of her <laughs> right and when it was so soft that i started thinking oh that was actually quite nice of her now i can let it go right now it's not affecting my vibration anymore now i can let it go so you see that thought process took a few minutes because in, initially i was fuming i was angry i i was angry why did she say that <laughs> why did she look at me like that i only took one sample right in the beginning i was angry so i went down the emotional scale then i had to do the work to bring myself back up back up to a place of going from being angry at her thinking that she's wrong to saying oh that was really nice of her right so that but that's i did that work right there right there while i was still at costco that work did not happen the second day or the third day or the fourth day it happened right away and 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 then i could just let it go but when you start fuming and you don't do anything about it then that feeling of stress that that creates it stays with you for a number of days once you start becoming upset about it if you don't do the self talk it stays for a number of days and that's why you soon as you feel negative emotion that is the purpose of our feeling place because soon as we feel that we've got to do something about it oh i'm feeling negative emotion means i need to do something about it okay fantastic so that's all i wanted to do uh, or say about choosing our thoughts which is our affirmation for today is don't tell yourself you're going to do it tomorrow like those people who put stuff on credit cards and say they'll deal with it tomorrow don't do that cuz it just and then they wake up one day and they say how did this happen right how did this happen and you know i say those people but i was one of those people right i've done that that's why i know what they say because i've said it <laughs> i've been there done that right so don't do something that's going to start negative emotion going in your life deal with it right there let it go because it does not serve you make sense awesome awesome oh nicole you look so comfortable i like that <laughs> oh yes me too <laughs> all right all right so that's what i had to say and the rest of our time together is supposed to be questions and answers lucy